And first on our panel is a guy that's like one of my children, growing up right before my eyes, uh, shortstop Elvis Andrews. And <laughs> Another guy that's like the, a brother that I never really wanted until I met him, Darren Oliver. And Josh Hamilton was supposed to be here. Um, from what I understand, he was diagnosed with ocular keratitis. And so, does anybody get that joke? Remember? Okay, yeah. You can laugh. Um, he, was, he actually does not have ocular keratitis, but he did have something come up. He sends his well wishes, uh, Vladdy, to you and to everyone here and apologizes for not being able to make it. In his place, uh, a guy who looks very similar uh, physique-wise and uh, I think can hit a baseball just as far, uh, John Daniels, the general manager and president of the Texas Rangers. <laughs> and, yeah, and you're like a cousin or something. Yeah, the adopted cousin. <laughs> the adopted cousin. Um, okay, so, J.D., I do want to start with you um, about, you know, we had seen Vladdy for so long hit baseballs a very far distance um, and crush this team <laughs> for a lot of years in Anaheim. <laughs> What, how did that, that whole process start as far as acquiring him uh, and, and the decision behind it? Well, yeah, first of all, he, he absolutely killed us for a long time. And back to, you know, 08, 09, the Angels were the team we were, we were trying to chase down as they had uh, Vladdy and old guys like Darren Oliver on their team. They kept getting our guys out with all these young bucks like Elvis and needed, needed some uh, – some veteran leadership. Uh, actually, Vladdy was the first right-hand hitter I can ever remember, uh, at least recently, uh, shifting on. Uh, it was Wash and uh, kind of came up with it and had the extreme shift. And so Vladdy would just hit a double in the right center gap kind of to teach us about it. But we were looking for a kind of veteran presence in the middle of the lineup. Uh, he'd had some, some knee issues that year before with Anaheim. Uh, didn't look like they were bringing him back. And so uh, Wash, Jose Vasquez, and myself, Wash, Jose Vasquez, and myself went out to uh, Anaheim Hills to, to meet Vladdy and, uh, and recruit him. And a um, few things stood out about that meeting, uh, but the, the one that really sold me was when, you know, honestly, at the time, we didn't know how much English Vladdy spoke. So uh, uh, Jose and then uh, and Vladdy's agent were, were doing some translating, but he understood very, very well when Wash said, hey, if you sign here, you get to hit fourth and you get to beat the Angels. <laughs> And his eyes lit up, and he nodded. And it was like, it was a universal language right there. But uh, it was awesome. He, had, he had welcomed us to his home. Um, his mom was uh, there cooking. He had, uh, it was like the ultimate bachelor pad. Walked in, Vladdy was sitting there watching TV with, with some of his friends and his cousins. Had on the mantle where you'd have like your family photo. He just had an MVP and some silver sluggers. And uh, they'd cleaned out the, uh, the big dining room table in, in the in the dining room, obviously, and uh, had a pool table and a Gatorade vending machine. I'm like, I love this guy. <laughs> Ollie, for you, playing with him a number of years, uh, what was, keep it clean, any, any good stories? No, I'm just kidding. Any good stories that you, that you can tell? Um, and what was, he's so quiet and shy on the outside, but I know in the clubhouse, you guys can get a little bit more out of him. Yeah, once you get to know Vladdy, he's not really that quiet, though. But um, probably one of the best stories, um, and he knows that he probably knew I was going to bring it up today. So this was 1996, and I was starting, and they didn't need a, a fifth starter for like the first couple weeks of the season. So they sent me down to uh, Port Charlotte. It's our, it was our A-ball team. And I remember I was like, ah, I'm just going down there, you know, just get my pitches in, get my pitch count, you know, get some work in. And we ended up playing uh, the West Palm Beach. It was the Expos. So I go down there, and, and this guy... I know you remember me talking about it one day in the outfield. I was like, I throw a pitch. I'm probably throwing like in the low 90s. And he hits me opposite field, home run in Florida. It's, it's really tough to hit, home, hit a ball that far in that place. And I'm like, who is this guy? And uh, fast forward probably like 10 or so years after that. And obviously, I found out who he was. So we're in the outfield one day just shagging. And I go, uh, Vladdy. I go, you remember that day when we, in A ball when you were facing me in that, in that game? He goes, yeah, yeah. And I go, you remember you hit that home run off? He goes, yeah. I go, how'd you do it, man? How'd you do it? I was like, and, and that's when I knew it was somebody special. You know, um, you know, you, you, 
for some reason, you just remember certain things when you're out there playing. You remember certain hitters. And I was just like, he was the guy. And I don't even know if he got called up that year in 96 or 97. And then, you know, it was a great time playing with him for the three years in Anaheim. And for sure, I definitely miss his mom's cooking because it was uh, every we, day. We like, do. And if you didn't get in there early after batting practice to get the food, it was gone. I mean, it was the managers, the coaches. J.D. probably snuck in there, got him a plate, <laughs> took it back up to his office. So, I, I mean, I really miss that. And I'll tell you what, Vlad, it was, it was a lot of fun playing with you, man. Um, congratulations. You know, always success. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll see you one day soon down the road, man. LV, for you, I would assume growing up watching Vladimir and then having the opportunity to play alongside him, what, what was your initial reaction when you found out um, that he was going to be your teammate? Well, like you did mention, and it only happened to me one year. My first year, 2009, uh, it was not fun to play you know, against him because he pretty much killed every pitcher that we had. So when I find out the next year that we were going to have Vladi, uh, for me, you know, it was it was a big party in Venezuela because I was there when I found out. Uh, being able not only you know play with him, be able to learn. Uh, for me, one of the best hitters in the in the whole history of the game. And uh, like I always say, the worst hitting coach because I always used to ask him, "Bloody, give me like a tip, you know? Like it's my second year, so I want to get better." And he always say, "See and hit it." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like. No, I get it, but, you know, I want to know, like, the hands and the preparation, what's inside. is like, see and hit it. <laughs> but I think, you know, years later, I realized that he's actually, that's the best advice somebody give me because as a hitter, everything is so hard, you know, when you're trying to do this and thinking about this in your hands and timing and that. And I always kind of go back to what he told me that year, you know, see and hit it. And, and when you do that pretty much in baseball, talking is, you know, keep it simple. Like don't, don't try to do too much, you keep it simple. And when you do that, that's the best you can do as a hitter, it keep you, get you back in track. But, uh, you know, like I always say, I really uh, I'm blessed to have, you know, players like him to show me the way how to uh, play the game the right way, play hard. Uh, show respect to everybody. That's why I think everybody has so much respect, you know, from him. And, uh, you know, being in Latin America, too, uh, he knew how, how hard it is in here to just go out there and, and, and don't be okay. You have to be, you know, ten times better than everybody uh, to stay in this level. So, you know, I always it's always been fun uh, watching him play. I do have a little, a little story that I always I keep mentioning to the guys in the clubhouse, especially young guys. We were playing in Kansas City, uh, day game, Sunday, right? And I, we were crushing that year for sure. And uh, he always get, he never hit in the cage for some reason. That's how good he is. Uh, and that day, like, you know, you get there, you get in the cold tank, hot tank, you know, get your body ready. It's a, it's a Sunday. It's pretty hot in Kansas City. And Bloody just got there to the stadium, sitting in his locker, you know, talking, because I'm, I'm the talking person there. And no he's idea. there, like, the whole time, like, no cage, just talking, just having fun, right? And I was like, ah, I'll be back, you know. I have like 200 swings, trying to get a couple hits at right field. Bloody sitting. I came back, he's sitting in, the, in his locker, chilling. I'm like, is he going to do something today? <laughs> Nothing. He, bam, he started getting ready, socks on. Haven't done a swing yet the whole day. I'm like, okay. You know, we're getting ready for the game. He comes out, get ready, on deck circle. Haven't got a swing yet. <laughs> I'm like, How, how's he going to do? Like, he probably a couple strikeouts today, right? He stepped in the field. Thing, I, I think I was on base. And he goes first pitch, 95 up, like left field, like 450 feet. <laughs> and I'm running the base. I'm like, how he did that? Like, you guys have no idea. Like, for us, preparation is the, the biggest thing. Swings before the game have to happen, at least 100. And for him to be able not have him make a whole swing and hit a 95 for me that's when I was like like he mentioned that's 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 not normal you don't you don't see that right now so okay as a young hitter when you see a guy like Vladi who has that natural ability and that can literally hit like everything no matter where a pitch is he'll go out and get it and it, it falls for a hit for a for a base hit how do you 
discern what he's able to do and not think that you can do it also? Well, being smart, I think, <laughs> as a player, knowing that you're not going to do it. Right. <laughs> so you have to actually, that's what I talk more like Michael, you know. <laughs> hey, Michael, give me an advice. But uh, no, like, it was just amazing, like, like you mentioned. And, and pitchers throughout the, throughout the league, they say, I always ask him, like, what, what will you throw to Bloody? And they, they always told me the same. Well, I was trying to throw in the middle. Mm -hmm. If I throw it up, down, in, oh. in the floor, in the ground, it's going to be gone. And that's true. And, and, but it's something that you're never going to see. Like, it's going to be, you have to wait years and years to see another Bloody. Maybe you never see him. And, and that's what he making, you know, so unique. And it's hard. Like, hitting is hard. And the way he did it, <laughs> even harder with power and average. So, you know. You, you know, as a fan, you have to appreciate it. You know, you don't, you don't want to see that too often. So, Ali, for you as a pitcher, how, how would you strategize? And when you had, like, those advanced meetings where you talk about how you're going to approach hitters, I mean, how do you do it with a guy like him? Um, actually, when you, when you see guys like Vladi, uh, Tony Gwynn, the guys who can just hit your good pitchers, I'd always just throw the ball right down the middle because I always think that they don't know what to do with the pitch right down the middle. <laughs> so they're like, oh, no, it's right down the middle, so they'll pop it up. <laughs> I mean, there, there's really not a whole lot you can do. I, I, and this is a true story. When we would have the report, I was like, hey, what are we going to do with this guy? They're like, just throw it down the middle. I mean, wh why try to throw something on? I mean, you guys seen the video when he hit a ball off the ground in Baltimore. You thought he was playing cricket. So I'm like, you, you can't throw a ball here, you can't throw it there because he will square it up. So... Take your chances and throw it down the middle. J.D., when you, when you brought him in, you mentioned the, the veteran presence that you wanted. How important was, even though his time here was brief, building that chemistry that we saw carry over for so many years? Yeah, I think it was huge. Uh, you listen to what these guys are saying. Uh, Michael talks about Vladdy being one of the best teammates that he's ever had. Um, and all that being said, that brushes over. I mean, he carried us that first half of that year. I mean, you know, everybody remembers – Josh's season and other things, and you know, John Play was was talking about it earlier. Like, I mean, Vladdy had I don't know 75, 80 RBIs, like at close to the halfway point. I mean, it was an unbelievable season. Uh, I think it took a lot of pressure off. It was a young club, you know, and let these guys go out and play. Um, as did you know, Ollie's presence in the bullpen. Then when we had Benji that year, I think those veteran guys took a lot of pressure off. It was otherwise a really talented, but a really young, inexperienced team. We hadn't really been in a, in a, a pennant race before. And here were guys that had been there and, and you know, and, and done it. And I think Vladdy gave, our, gave the rest of the lineup a lot of uh, leeway and just kind of able to relax because they knew he was going to get it done. Well, thank you guys so much for offering the insight. Vladdy, felicidades. Uh, una más pre uh, question, pregunta. Pre right. si, uh, ¿Quieres uh, hacer una entrevista en inglés conmigo? I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Do it in Spanish. Your Spanish is getting better. That's it. It is getting better. Come on. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks, y'all, so much for being here. Thanks for being here.